Disclaimer. We are not historical experts, just some Roman history enjoyers. This video was made for fun and does not mean in any way to offend anyone or hate on the designs for the character. Keep in mind that everything stated further is an opinion and you may disagree with our takes. Now, without any further ado, let us begin. Roman Centurions When the battle begins, it is them who lead and fight alongside their subordinate comrades. These men not only listen to orders, but also adapt to the various battlefield situations, maintaining order and discipline. They are fierce, bright, scary and loyal, each in their own respective ways, some even going down in history for their deeds such as Sempronius Densus. Today, we are looking at the Centurion, a DLC character from an action game titled For Honor. We went through his equipment from armor to sword to pick out the most realistic pieces and combine them into a somewhat plausible looking officer of a Roman legion. When it comes to his equipment, we are presented with over 30 unique armor sets and over 50 sword variations to create our own custom loadouts. It is divided into parts, helm, torso and shoulders for the armor, and blade, hilt and the guard for the sword. We will not be discussing parts like the cape, since we cannot really remove it or influence its appearance independently. Now, For Honor is not really a historically accurate game, rather it is more focused on interesting gameplay and cinematic animations. It is no wonder then that if we were to point out every single error in the design of the Centurion, we would get an entirely separate video. With this in mind, let us proceed to the equipment evaluation. Let's start with the elms. Majority of them come with a mask that was historically used by the cavalry. This leaves us only with a narrow pool of choices. Now, no information is provided about what specific moment in history the Centurion is from but he appears to be from around the 2nd century AD when the Empire was at its strongest. Following this assumption, we think that the best helmet choice would be the Macriana. It has all the characteristic features of a Roman helmet. The cheek plates, the collar and the frontal forehead reinforcement are all there, plus there's no mask. The Cresta is present in the game, however it is a cosmetic add-on that needs to be unlocked by purchasing a costume set for in-game currency. It was a bit tricky to pick the best chess piece. The segmentatus appeared a bit too lowly of a choice, not to mention that all but two have male underneath for some reason. Only the Procella and Captatoris seem to contain Subarmalis instead, as they should. The Kingulum is also under instead of over the plates. Musculatus on the other hand seemed a little high-end since the only ones that actually fit him were rather heavily decorated a bit too heavily for comfort. The best option in our opinion would be the Squamatas. They are rank appropriate and as the only armor type feature a Kingulum placed on top where it should be. Best options in our opinion would be the Amaranthus and Dacia. Shoulder armor was the biggest problem as there isn't a single type that would vaguely resemble anything of historical record. Van braces and gauntlets in such form would not have been yet invented. Rounded pauldrons, the way they are presented in the game, are also later armor technology. Best deal we have are the models that are visibly inspired by the Manica, which for a change has been used by the Roman troops to counter the fierce Dacian Falks. <coughs> having to pick the lesser evil, we chose the Dalmatia, despite it having different spoilers. Still far from correct, but at least the Manica on the right hand is okay-ish if we ignore the medieval gauntlet and the fact that it's supposed to go along the whole arm. The plate on the other one is placed on the second sleeve so all we can do is just ignore it. When it comes to the Gladius there are a few viable options to choose from. To make it easier we just came up with some rules that each part has to follow in order to be a good choice. Obviously, they share the same common condition that they cannot interfere with the usability nor integrity of the sword. For the hilt, we'd opt for the profiled, fairly thick handle with a sizeable pommel to keep the grip firm and stable. 
Here's some of our suggestions for this part. Whispering. Helmeted. Croque Amors. Pax. Decanus Pax. And Decanus. The guard ought to be simple and rounded with possible ornaments. Romans rarely deviated from the oval shape. It's worth mentioning that models for this one tend to be very over the top, so it's important to keep it on the simple side. Our best options would be Trusty, Pax, Decanus Pax, Decanus, Scorpion, and Praetor Pax. There's not too much that needs to be said about the blade. Think of the coolest, most original options in the game and think directly the opposite of that. The blade is for bashing and slicing, it's not made to look pretty. Serrations, bends, heavy decorations are a big no-no. Here's a few decent looking ones. Tempered, Veteran, Optio, Trusty, and battle world. We didn't include standards or any other similar rustic designs since their state would not be tolerated in the Roman military maintenance standard. Their steel should be spotless with slight imperfections like a day's worth of rust may be acceptable, but still highly inappropriate for an officer. Alright, that's how our historically accurate gear looks like. Working with what the game had to offer was not that easy and the final result is still fairly off. It is a satisfying result however, with many improvements from the initial state. Let us know what you think about this setup and remember, Roma Caput Mundi.